I'm Steve Davis. I'm a retired United Airlines captain, and I served with United Airlines for 36 and a half years. And I retired with about 18,000 hours. I had 5,000 hours in 737s. Then I flew 57s, 67s, DC-10s. I was a line check airman on the DC-10s. So I miss it. Uh, best window seats in the house. I held a job as a standards captain and a line check airman for United. My responsibilities were to train new captains and new flight crews and take them out and introduce them to special entry airports such as San Francisco, Kauai, Hong Kong, and places like that. Jason and I worked together along with quite a few other standards captains at United Airlines Major Flight Training Center at uh, Stapleton International Airport in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we all worked, uh, we'd all check in in the morning, pick up our crews that we were training, take them into the simulators, uh, give them their checks, make sure they're up to speed on everything, and then and we either signed them off or they had to get extra training and so forth. The fondest memory of Jason, he was a cut-up. Always had a smile, always had a good word for everybody. Even when someone was having a bad day as a student, one of their pilots he was training, that he would get them out of that mood and get them back on track in the training and so forth. He was a very up person. Jason approached uh, three or four of us by the end of August and wanted to know if, if any of us could possibly take this flight, Flight 93. Uh, his son had a soccer match and he needed someone to possibly fly that for him. And my response to Jason was, Jason, I'd love to do that for you, because, but I'm gonna be up elk hunting with my brothers and good friends in Northern Colorado, so I won't be able to do it. Where we were elk hunting up in the high country, there was no cell phone service. Uh, no radios, no televisions. So on the 14th of, of September, three days after 9-11, uh, a rancher come riding in on horseback into the hunting camp. We were all sitting around drinking our morning coffee around the big tents and everything. And he said, do you guys have any idea of what's transpired or what's happened to this world? We said, no, what are you talking about? And he reached in his saddlebag and pulled out a copy of the Rocky Mountain News from that day and handed it to us. It's like you slap in the face when you open the newspaper and look at that. The front page was there. The newspaper didn't really give a lot of details as far as who was on board, who was on airplanes and so forth. They just said United Airlines and American Airlines. Uh, no great details at that point. So when I got home, I got it all from my wife. And I think the realization that what had transpired really hit home the fact that, that was flight 93. But that realization doesn't hit you until you're sitting in the dark thinking about it. What if I had been on that flight that day and I had left home without kissing my wife goodbye? or I never hugged my kids that day. So whatever you do, that's the biggest lasting impact that I took away from this. Don't miss that opportunity to tell them you love them, kiss them goodbye, and make sure you do the same when you get home. I guess one of the most somber events, the closest to this, of the, of the healing fields is when there were better than 200 pilots and flight attendants in uniform that um, went to Jason Dahl's memorial service in Colorado. And to see all the people that you knew, that you flew with, you worked with, the flight attendants, the other pilots, and to see a, a, a great, a picture of Jason and his wife and family there and, and to celebrate his life as he'd wanted to be celebrated. That's pretty tough to walk away from that. 
first time I walked into the healing field and saw 3,000 flags out there flying and, and with either military boots to signify military people that lost their lives, police officers' boots, firemen's boots, um, and then to come across the flags of the crews that I flew with and knew with a, a picture of them hanging there and a write-up of who they were and so forth. Um, and then to see the ceremony start with bagpipers and it just, you cannot leave that ceremony with not having a tear in your eye. Those people gave the ultimate. And that brings you to that point, but there for the grace of God, go I. fields will be open from September 10th through the 17th and you're welcome to come out and help with the flag placements and and then observe the September 11th ceremony that evening at the healing fields hope to see all of you out there